We'll start with Darren Zaslow. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, just your impressions on Iowa State. Obviously, you know, a talented team that's beat Baylor this year. What are you seeing um, out of the Cyclones so far? Yeah, very, you know, very good basketball team. Can shoot the three, can put it on the floor. Uh, you know, they create matchup problems because all five of them can shoot the three, including their center. So that pulls your center away from the rim and it gives them driving lanes because of that. So, you know, they're a tough matchup. They really are. Um, you know, we're going to have to defend. We're going and, and they shoot 90% from the foul line. So we just can't continue to foul them and put them at the foul line. So it's going to be a tough matchup, but, you know, we, we I think we can defend them. I, I, I think uh, if we can stay out of foul trouble and, and, and offensive rebound, I thought Baylor the other day did a great job on the offensive boards, and that's going to be important for us also. We'll go to Charles Montgomery. Coach, last year, Esme Martinez, she was a pivotal part on this team with her points per game and her rebounds per game. Can you speak to kind of the maybe the offseason mentality she took to improve her numbers like the way she has so far this year? Yeah, and, and you know, she really didn't have full workouts because of the COVID. And, and you got to give her a lot of credit. Uh, she was getting in places and, and working out on her own. Uh, but when she was here and we was able to work with her, she did a great job, really. And, and, and we put her with the guards a lot. We put her down there with the guards and did guard workouts with her to help her with her ball handling and outside shooting and all that. Because she always was a great rebounder, always could finish around the rim. But, you know, you got to keep adding to your game. And we felt that we got her with the guards a lot and got her out on the perimeter some. It, it really helped her in her game. Ethan Bach, go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, as you guys continue to extend the win streak, do you feel there's any added pressure going into each game with that target on your back? No, not really. Not really. We, we don't talk about it, to be honest with you. We, we just talk about the next game. So. We, we really don't get into that. We know we have Iowa State, which is a, a great team. And, and, and we, we, we have our hands full of Iowa State. So we're not really worrying about that. And, uh, you know, hopefully our girls will be ready to go. We're going to have to have our quickness. We're going to have to be moving our feet. We're going to have to get to the ball and, and that type of stuff. So it's going to be important we're, we're focusing on uh, Iowa State. Joe Bricado, go ahead. Mike, you're 13 and two now. You were in a similar position last year. You started out 13 and one, and you, you've commented a couple times about this year's team chemistry being a lot better. What else gives you hope that this year's team can continue the level of play that they had in the first half of the season? Well, first of all, I think we, we've already played, what, nine leg games? So, uh, you know, we're farther along in the leg, uh, really, out of 13 games. You know, I think we won, what, seven league games so far. So that's better than we were at this time. So, you know, we got to go the second part of the league and, and we need to stay focused. We, we need to continue to do the things that we're doing well right now and, and not get caught up in everything else. So this team's very focused. I, I, I feel very good about this team. Uh, you know, they're focused. They want to win. They want to play defense and, and they understand what it's going to take. Kevin Kinder, go ahead. Mike, you've talked about that through the year, and obviously that's been a strength of your team. Down a couple more players now. How are they reacting to that? Is that a point of conversation at all? Are you happy with the ones you had left? Um, you know, I mean, that's you know that that's a tough challenge to overcome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we if you look at our rotation, uh, we have our whole rotation still here. So, you know, and and, and it's always tough. You know, you know, at this time of the year, but you know, we have our rotation. The rotation is what it is, and, and I feel very good about our rotation. We'll go back to Darren. Hey, Coach, you're bringing up, uh, I think Ashley Jones earlier, and obviously her and Kaiser, top, you know, two scorers in the league. What are you seeing out of Jones, and I guess how much of this matchup is about them and, and their production? Well, neither one of them be guarding each other, so it's not going to be about that. And, you know, Ashley Jones is a great player. She, she can sh score at all three levels just like Kaiser can. So she's a tough matchup because of that. And, and she draws a lot of fouls. Uh, she, you know, she'll get into you and, and, and draw a foul on you, even if you have her covered very well. So 
we have to be smart about that. We have to move our feet once we get her stopped because she does a lot of step throughs and spins and that type of stuff. And then she'll back you down into the post one time and then next time she'll shoot a three. So that's the type of players they have. Uh, a lot of them can do that. And we, we have to be ready for that. Joe, go ahead. Mike, you mentioned a little bit earlier, everybody on the Iowa State roster can shoot when, when they're putting four guards, guards on the floor. And that's not totally unique to what you're seeing in the, in the game now. But how much of a challenge is that to guard so much on the perimeter against them? Well, it's a big challenge. Uh, this team for Iowa State, uh, they drive the ball well, too. Normally, if, you know, if they're just three-point shooting team, they just stand out and shoot threes, and they don't drive the ball very well. But the – this team can drive the ball as well as shoot the ball. And that, that puts added pressure on your defense. And then it takes your center away from the rim because their center shoots threes very well. And she hurt us last year, yet last year a little bit, uh, Scott girl, by popping and shooting threes and that. So we have to be aware of that. And they'll run plays for her. They'll run her off staggers. They'll, they'll do wall screens for her. They'll do all kinds of things for her to you know hit a three on your center. Joe, go ahead. And Mike, having uh, a thousand fans at this game, how much of a difference is that going to make? And how welcome is that considering you've played the first half of the season without any? Yeah, it's great. It'll be great. You know, I know our players are really going to be glad that there's fans in the stands. And, and we played some games on the road uh, that their teams had fans in the stands. So, you know, it'd be great to have our home fans back and, and hopefully we can get a thousand people in there and have a great atmosphere. Kevin Kinder, go ahead. Following up on defending the bigs, uh, the shoot the threes for them, would you prefer to get someone more mobile like Esmeri or even Kari, even though she gives up a little height out on them because they're pretty mobile? Or are you confident all of your post players can defend them when they do step out? Well, they, you know, it has to be urgent, you know, what, no matter who it is, if it's Kari, Esmeri, or Blessing, it has to be urgent. They have to know that they have to get out there on her because she will shoot the three and she's very good at it. So that, that, that's the biggest thing. You know, we're not going to stop them from shooting threes, all their threes. But what we don't want them to do is get wide open threes, make it tough on them, shoot over top of our hand and box them out. And then what the main thing we don't want to do is overrun and, and let them in into the paint all night. We, we definitely don't want to do that. If, if they're going to beat us, they need to beat us over top. They don't need to beat us in the paint. Charles, go ahead. Coach, it's become a very significant debate, uh, at least for men's basketball with the conference tournaments and everything like that, and whether or not they should be played with COVID. And so what are your thoughts on that when it comes to just NCAA basketball in general this season uh, on the upcoming thoughts on the NCAA, you know, what they're going to do about the conference tournaments and what is just your thoughts in general on playing those? No, we want them to play. We want to play. We, we want to play every game we can play. We want to play the conference tournament. Hopefully we can get into the NCAA. We want to play the NCAA tournament. And if they want us to play something after that, we'll play in that. Because, uh, you know, we want to play that, you know, these are basketball players, they want to play games. And, 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 you know, we're coaches, we want to coach games. So no, I'm 100%. Any game we can play, we're welcome to play. Any more questions for coach this afternoon? All right, thank you, everyone. If we could have the TV 